Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in 2014 AMD launched the Sempron 3850 at a price of just $39 though it was often found cheaper than that and here in the UK it cost about $25 to £30. Not only was it the first quad core CPU to carry the Sempron name but it was also the last Sempron ever released. Designed for the short lived AM1 socket this 4 core CPU comes in a tiny box with a tiny heatsink and has a tiny 1.3 GHz locked clock speed. It also uses a tiny amount of power with a TDP of 25 watts. No need to worry about overheating here. At one point I even removed the heatsink and it still didn't overheat even after an hour of usage. So this chip was never really intended for gaming but it certainly appeared in some ultra cheap build guides six or seven years ago and anyone looking to save even more money would have surely made use of the integrated Radeon R3 graphics. With a frequency of just 450 megahertz and 128 cores, the onboard GPU isn't groundbreaking by any means, but we can just about play titles like Fortnite and GTA 5 without a discrete graphics card. Well I say play, but what I mean is run. The games will start and turning them into a pixelated mess helps get the average frame rates up toward 30, though in either case the experience isn't enjoyable at all. I also ran a quick, well it was actually the opposite of quick, but I ran a Cinebench R20 test and after starting the test I took my dog Harry out for a walk. Good boy. Good boy. And then when I came back the test had gotten this far. We must have been out for about 45 minutes. After 15 more minutes Cinebench froze. Brilliant. So on its own the Sempron 3850 borders on unusable even for everyday light usage and even light games won't run very well but what about when we pair it with a discrete graphics card? The 6700 XT, under normal circumstances, is a very capable 1080p gaming graphics card, but can it save our 3850, a chip that will sometimes cause a system freeze just by opening a photo? I wish I was joking, but the system actually did freeze when I opened a photo. Somehow though, and seemingly thanks to the power of prayer alone, Crisis Remastered ran with more than 5 frames per second, despite the huge bottleneck caused by the AMD CPU. There were even a few moments where we saw at least 30 FPS even as the action started to heat up. As I'm sure you'll agree though, this probably isn't playable, and whether we were using 720p, 1080p or even 1440p, things stayed the same performance wise. It's all downhill from here I'm afraid. The thing is, all of your favourite games will probably run on this processor, it has all the necessary instruction sets to start everything, it just isn't very good at playing them. Red Dead PowerPoint Presentation 2 averaged out at 9 FPS with some stutters and freezes here and there. I've got to be honest, this may just be one of the worst processors I've ever tested. It's certainly a front runner for the worst quad core, and that's ignoring gaming performance because it was never really intended for this, it's just bad at everything. Nonetheless we shall persevere. Jumping into Fortnite again, and I thought the addition of a graphics card might have meant we could take advantage of higher settings, but I thought wrong. The game relies too heavily on CPU power and once again it caused a huge bottleneck here. To be fair, this chip is going to bottleneck most GPUs. I wouldn't be surprised if it held back something like a GT730. I've actually got no data from a GTA 5 benchmark with the 6700 as the game just got into an infinite loading loop. I waited about half an hour to no avail. In this case then the game ran better with the integrated Radeon graphics and I never thought that I'd say that. So I said earlier that it was all downhill from here, um, from the crisis benchmark, but I must have forgotten about Overwatch which at ultra settings had some pretty decent moments. In fact, for the most part the game performed okay with the occasional freeze here and there. Now this isn't ideal, especially in a competitive online shooter like this one. I mean, no one wants their game to freeze as they're trying to wipe out an enemy, but I am pleasantly surprised by this result. 
Overwatch often runs quite reasonably with lower end processors and I'm glad to see the Sempron was doing well here as well. I like the way that the chip maxes out at like 13 degrees. If you want something that runs cool even with the puny stock cooler then this certainly ticks that box. Finally then, let's round off our tests with a migraine inducing Fallout 4 gameplay result. Running through the opening settlement of Sanctuary meant an average of about 10 FPS and this will only drop the closer we get to Concord. I imagine that areas like Diamond City will probably cut this frame rate in half again, maybe worse. For all its flaws though, it's certainly fun to mess around with one of these. Figuring out what it can and can't do will certainly be pretty interesting for any would-be owner and perhaps I'll even keep it around to see how the integrated graphics handle future releases. For ATP Gaming, here we come. This has been the Sempron 3850 test. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Expect a few more Sempron 3850 gameplay tests over the coming days. I'll have a, a go at seeing what else it can run, um, providing it doesn't crash the entire system, of course. And hopefully, I'll see all of you in the next one.